Hey friends, today I'm going to be sharing some frugal fall decor tips with you guys. Just some things I like to do every year as I prepare for fall decorating and some ways that I'm able to save some money. I'm also going to take you shopping with me to Hobby Lobby and a few other places and kind of show you what I found this year and what I ended up bringing home with me. So I'm excited to take you guys along. We're going to do some DIY projects and it'll be a fun video. So I hope you'll stick around. So the very first thing that I like to do is bring up my fall decor bin. I have one big plastic tote that I keep all of my fall decor in and I just like to go through it at the beginning of each fall season just so I can kind of figure out what I have, what I don't need anymore. I'll get rid of broken or old stems and then kind of decide what I want to donate and just evaluate what it is that I need before I go shopping and I'm tempted to buy all of the new fall decor because that's the temptation, right? You go into these stores like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, you see all this beautiful fall stuff and really you just end up buying stuff that you probably don't need. And so I decided to go through my entire bin, look through it, kind of evaluate what I have, what I'd like more of, and then get rid of stuff. I have a bunch of dried hydrangeas that I've used over and over and over again, and there are just some in here that are getting really old and breaking apart, and I think I'm going to salvage some of them and maybe make a wreath out of them. I just hate to throw <laughs> things away. It's a struggle of mine. Um, and then I also have some other pretty stems that I had planned on donating, but I thought, you know, I bet these could make a really beautiful wreath. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to clean this out. I brought my vacuum out and cleaned it all up, sucked out all of the old hydrangea stems that were laying around and just put everything back into the bin so it felt very organized and I had a better plan in mind before I go shopping and get anything new. I know what I have, I know what I need for the year. Well, let's be honest, none of it is really a need per se, but <laughs> just I know what I'm looking for and what I'd like more of if I do go shopping for fall decor. So I would just advise you to do the same, but I just love trying new things, playing with what I already have and getting creative. And speaking of creativity, I'm so happy because today's video sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes in areas like illustration, design, and productivity. Classes are taught by industry experts, but they're designed for creatives. I also love the fact that Skillshare takes a learn by doing approach with on-demand stackable lessons. So as a homemaker, I'm always trying to learn new skills and grow in my capacity. And I love the fact that Skillshare offers an array of different classes that you can take, including sewing and knitting, pottery, paper crafts, and then also you can take classes about home design and home organization, minimalism. You guys know how much I love to bake and use my sourdough starter. They have classes all about uh, sourdough and how to make a sourdough starter, how to bake sourdough bread. They also have multiple classes in the area of painting, whether it's watercolor, acrylic, or oil painting. Some of my new subscribers might not know this, but I actually have some prints available on my blog that I painted, some landscape paintings. And uh, really most of those were done with acrylic paint because I am so overwhelmed when it comes to painting with oils. And I love the fact that Skillshare offers an oil painting class for beginners. I've already begun to watch it and the instructor right off the bat said that she used to paint with acrylics because she was intimidated by oil, but now she loves to work with oils. So right away, I just felt like I could relate with her and I was immediately interested in what it was she had to say. So Skillshare helps you level up in your career or hobbies with classes from experts across creative fields. There are learning paths for mastering specific skills, and you can actually save the classes that you're interested in. I already have quite the list of classes that I've saved so that I can check those out later and begin to explore them. Guys, I am so excited to join the Skillshare community, and I know you guys are going to love it too. So 
The first 500 people who click on the link in my description below are going to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. That means you have an entire month to give Skillshare a try. You get to explore some of the classes that they have to offer and see if there's something that you might be interested in. That gives you an entire month to try out Skillshare. I think this is an amazing offer. Why not take advantage of it? Again, the first 500 people who click on the link in my description below will get an entire month of Skillshare for free, but you have to be among those first 500 people. So make sure you check out that link below for all of the details. I'm going to be diving into some painting classes. Skillshare has so many classes designed for creatives, so take advantage of that link below. I know you guys are gonna love it just like I have. Now, like I said, one of the first things that I thought I would tackle is maybe making my own fall wreath. I just love beautiful fall wreaths and I feel like I'm tempted to buy a new one every year. And when I saw these dried hydrangeas, a lot of the stems were broken off so I knew I couldn't put them in a basket or anything like that. And I thought, hmm, what if I made a wreath? Now, I just happened to have a grapevine wreath that my mom let me have. She just had an extra one in her mudroom and she said, sure, go ahead and use it. I actually looked at the thrift store. Usually thrift stores have these um, and I, I couldn't find one so she let me have this one. But basically all I'm going to do is just kind of tuck these hydrangeas into this grapevine wreath and I'll use some hot glue as well to kind of keep them in place. Obviously, um, since they are dried flowers, it's making a bit of a mess. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this wreath. Now, I ended up not having enough hydrangea pieces to go all the way around the top of the wreath. So I just decided to fill in the bottom portion with my hydrangeas. And I really think it turned out quite beautiful. I kind of love the way that it looks. It's not exactly perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up my mess here and then choose some ribbon to hang at the top of the wreath. I have a collection of ribbon that I have purchased over the years at thrift stores and it's so cheap, it's always like 25 cents. So I just buy it when I see it. I ended up finding this really beautiful kind of rusty colored velvet ribbon um, and I almost went with that and then I found a really pretty sort of like sagey olive green velvet ribbon. So I went with that instead and just tied it up at the top and I think it turned out really beautiful. I actually first tried hanging it on my front door and I thought it was really pretty there, um, but I wanted to try it in a few more places as well. So um, I ended up kind of going all over the house and putting it in several different spots. You guys are gonna have to let me know which spot you like the most. <laughs> The hydrangea wreath is kind of hanging out in the sunroom. I'm not quite ready to decorate for fall as I record this. It's still August and I'm enjoying summertime here in Michigan. Um, but I'm gonna move on to another wreath and this one was actually much less messy and a lot easier to make. Funny story, uh, when my mom told me I could borrow that grapevine wreath in her mudroom. She was actually at a thrift store and she said, they have a couple here, you want me to grab them? So by the time I started to make this one, she pulled up to the house and dropped off a few grapevine wreaths for me. And it was just such perfect timing. So I'm so thankful for her. <laughs> and it was so easy to put together. I literally just took these stems they kind of remind me of dried flowers, which I really love incorporating into my home during the fall. So I just literally crammed these stems into the grapevine wreath and kind of used the wiry stems of the flowers and, and kind of wrapped those around the wreath itself. Now again, I tried this wreath all over the house. It really turned out quite beautiful. Um, I tried it in the kitchen and in the entryway, and so you guys will have to tell me where you like it the most.
All right, so now that I've gone through my decor and now that I know what I have, I've already made a couple of wreaths for the year. I'm gonna go ahead and do some shopping. And the first place that I'm going to go is Hobby Lobby. Now, I really enjoy Hobby Lobby. They usually have sales, especially on their holiday decor. So you can score some great deals. I never buy anything at full price here, but I'm just gonna kind of walk through and show you some things that cost my eye and some stems that I really loved this year. So the first thing that caught my eye were these pretty little white sort of cream colored buds. They look like dried flowers to me and I have a bundle of these already at home so I didn't grab any more but you could look at my previous home tours to kind of see what I'm talking about and how I use them throughout my home. Another stem that really caught my eye that I thought was so beautiful were these pretty little, I think I want to say they're Cosmos um, is what the description was. And they had a lot of beautiful fall colors. In fact, they had like this pretty kind of rust colored color and I almost bought those but then I ended up finding some cream ones and then a darker color as well and I thought that the three colors together were really beautiful. Um, I loved how they all looked together but um, I think I ended up only grabbing the cream ones. Now the next stem that I really thought was super beautiful were these, I don't even know what I would call them. They are just this really pretty natural, it almost looks like a wheat variety. I'm not even sure what they were called, but I love the way they looked so realistic and I could just picture a bundle of them looking so beautiful in a container. Um, there was another stem there that also caught my eye and again you guys i'm so bad about this i'm sure i'm gonna get a lot of comments explaining to me what these stems are exactly i'm assuming it's another variety of some type of wheat and it just looks so pretty and i thought that these would be beautiful in my home as well now hobby lobby also has uh, a section with dried stems but they're very expensive and what i like to do throughout the summer i will hang them and dry them myself so i don't have to pay these high prices for dried stems hobby lobby also had a really beautiful variety of vases and i tend to prefer like antiques or vintage finds I also found these throw blankets that I thought were really beautiful. I loved the olive green color and the fact that they were cotton. Um, just a lot of pretty colors for fall if you're looking for throw blankets. I might actually go back and grab some. They had some really beautiful pillow varieties as well that I thought, look at these gorgeous fall colors, this rusty color and the mustard yellow. Hobby Lobby also had this really beautiful, almost like pottery looking dishes and bowls and all kinds of things. I've never seen these here before and they were so beautiful. I think, yeah, Market Square is the brand and they looked like authentic and vintage. Um, I really love finding handmade pottery. These of course are made in China, but I was tempted to grab these big old coffee mugs. My husband and I love a big fat coffee mug and they even had these really pretty like placemats and aprons as well that were just, they, they reminded me of linen. And I thought that I would share these with you. They had this really cute French stripe down the center and I, I thought that they were really pretty. I thought this was a really beautiful tablecloth with the ruffle here as well. And I love the variety of copper that Hobby Lobby had. So here's like this kind of shiny orange copper, not a huge fan of that, but this picture looked more authentic to me. Probably not real copper, but just very beautiful and looked a little bit more aged. They also had plates that I thought would make for such a gorgeous fall tablescape. I just loved the little scene on them and the mugs that went with them. And here's a few more napkins that would go beautifully with that tablecloth that I was sharing earlier. So 
So I was loving all of the beautiful copper and gold turkeys that Hobby Lobby had. I just felt like these would be so beautiful in the center of your Thanksgiving table as decor, maybe surrounded by like pine cones or acorns or whatever. Now, I wasn't super impressed with the faux pumpkins as I started to kind of shop this section. Everything was looking sort of cheesy to me. And then I spotted these beautiful pumpkins. Oh my goodness, you guys, they looked so realistic. I could not believe, look at the difference. Like if you compare these pumpkins to uh, some of the ones that I was looking at earlier, it's night and day. And these, I mean, even the stem looks like broken off. It looks like real wood and they say $43.99, which is so expensive, but they were 50% off, which I ended up splurging and getting one. I know that that's a lot to spend on a faux pumpkin, but I just figured if I invest over time, one piece at a time, um, that's kind of how I'm viewing this. It's an investment. So I grabbed one. Now they had a lot of beautiful fall wreaths, but um, I already made a few for this year, so I ended up not purchasing any. They also had some gorgeous fall garlands, which, I don't typically use fall garlands in my decor. I usually just fill vases throughout my house with stems, but they really had a lot of beautiful options here at Hobby Lobby. So one other place that I decided to visit was Home Goods, and I was actually pleasantly surprised I didn't find a whole lot there, but they did have a lot of beautiful fall decor. I ended up finding a few more pumpkins actually that looked very real realistic. They reminded me of that large one that I purchased at Hobby Lobby, not quite as like peachy orange, a little bit more on the yellow side, but I thought the price was really good, so I grabbed a few of these to add to my collection. Home Goods really had a beautiful variety depending on your style. Some of these glass pumpkins were absolutely beautiful. With my boys, I just tend to avoid glass. <laughs> they also had some really cute fall baskets with scallops that were, they were so tempting. And um, I just love the variety of you know dinnerware that Home Goods has to offer. They have such beautiful things here. Um, I was especially drawn to this turkey platter. This brass turkey platter was so pretty. It would have gone well with those Hobby Lobby turkeys that I <laughs> shared earlier. And of course, I always like to check out kind of the blankets and throws and pillows at Home Goods as well. I didn't end up purchasing any here, but they always have a beautiful variety of blankets and pillows. Here are those pumpkins that I ended up grabbing at Home Goods. I just feel like they look very realistic, and for 12 bucks, I thought that they were a really good price. Of course, I already told you I got that Hobby Lobby pumpkin as well, and it really truly looks so realistic. I wish they'd had more colors. I always love incorporating like the white and blue and green pumpkins throughout my home, but maybe I can grab some at a farm stand locally. And then I already sort of told you about the stems that I ended up purchasing at Hobby Lobby. As soon as I pulled them out of the bag and saw them in my home, I got so excited. They really look so beautiful. You guys are gonna have to tell me what these stems are supposed to be. Um, but I just thought that they would be really beautiful in my home for the fall season. Now, like I said, I'm in no rush to decorate for fall, but I just had to see some of these stems in a container because they just looked so beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some. I usually like to, rather than cutting the stems short, just because I'm always switching out vessels and vases, I just sort of bend them <laughs> so that I can adjust the height if I need to later on. But I'm going to put some in a little container to just sort of show you how beautiful these are. Um, this is just a, I think, a crock that I got at an antique store or a thrift shop, I can't remember. But I thought that they looked really beautiful here and I wanted to share them with you. All 
right, so the very last thing that I like to do, and I've shared this tip with you guys before, but it really helps to save a lot of money. I like to go out into my yard and just clip branches and I'll bring them inside or sometimes I'll even dry them outside. I have a redbud tree right outside my kitchen window and it has the prettiest little heart-shaped leaves. And whenever August is coming to an end, I like to go out there and just clip a pile of branches. And uh, of course, they're still very green, although some of them are already starting to turn yellow. But before they turn completely yellow, I sort of like to dry them when they're still green because then they dry into this beautiful sagey olive green color that I love incorporating throughout my house in the fall. So just something to keep in mind if you don't want to incorporate like oranges or yellows or reds in your home, which that's totally beautiful. I love that look just for my own home. I like to keep things a bit more neutral. Then clip your branches and your stems while they are still green so that they sort of dry into a beautiful um, softened green tone. Um, but I just go ahead and tie up the big old bundle of branches. I've probably been doing this for two or three years now and I hang them outside our back door to dry and you'll see here soon what they look like once they're all dried and then I'll kind of mix these dried stems in with other like faux stems throughout my home and it's just I don't know it's really beautiful and I love the way it looks. I mentioned earlier that you could use dried flowers as decor and you can see here in my little back mudroom area, I have some dried chamomile that a sweet lady from church, she gave me a bundle of it this summer and I went ahead and dried it and I can't wait to use that in my fall decor as well. So just some tips to help you save money. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you maybe were inspired. Like I said, I'm not quite ready to decorate for fall, but I am getting excited about it and Hopefully this got you thinking about some ideas. If you have any tips you'd like to share with me, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out that description box for all the information about Skillshare. It's such a great deal. What a wonderful way to get creative this fall season by learning a new skill. So thanks again for watching guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.